so glad to see you again. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about how to find the reality of the Almighty in this world. I spent the first uh, many years of my life in front of a, what I call a boob tube, <laughs> which is a television, and uh, it was like emptiness, and wherever I went, I could even be in a room full of people, and I still felt alone. And uh, prayer, I didn't have any idea, the furthest notion as to how I could talk to God and he would answer me. But one day when I became 20, you know, at the end of 29 years old, I realized that uh, I needed God and I could not live without him anymore, although I celebrated Jewish holidays and I did many things like all other Jews. I didn't have that relationship element in my life. See, Judaism is not a religion like the churches want everybody to have a religion. Judaism is actually a relationship with the Almighty. And it was started with Abraham when he realized he needed a relationship with God as well. And... Uh, this relationship was a give and take. Uh, that's why at one point the Almighty told Abraham to take his only son and bring him up to the mountain to sacrifice him to Hashem and to see if Abraham Avinu was willing to give up the most important physical thing in this world, which was his son. And uh, we get tested a lot all the way down the line. Testing is part of that relationship. And uh, it wasn't until I finally realized, and God helped me because I went to a beach one day and I said, Dear God, where are you? Either I want to know you or I want to die. I don't want to live like this anymore. And then many miraculous, mysterious things began to happen. I'm not going to give the whole story right now because we'd be here for a couple of hours, yeah? <laughs> but to make a long story short, uh, I was told that I needed to ask God forgiveness for sin. And I didn't even know half of what I know now as far as what sins are. But I came before the Almighty and I said, please, Hashem. Of everything I know that's wrong, I'm sorry. And everything I don't know, I'm sorry. And then my whole life began to change. It's as if the divine presence of the Almighty kicked in and decided to start giving me a, a guidance and a leadership. And I, I could hear inside of me, go this way, don't go that, do this, don't do that. And so it became much easier uh, to do what I believe the Almighty wanted me to do. And then, of course, he led me to a place where I began to study the Torah because, uh, and I recommend for all those who have not really studied biblically up to this point to begin to study the book of Proverbs, the book of Psalms, uh, are two great places to start to read the Torah. Uh, of course, the five books of Moshe, Moses. Um, all of Israel, all the Orthodox Jewish people study the same portion of Torah in that week all over the world. Uh, we call it the parash parasha. And then there is a portion of the prophets that go with that, and that's called the Haftorah. And it's totally amazing that every year at that time we read the same Parsha, but every year I receive a higher level of illumination of the Word of God. I say, please, Hashem, come and be my teacher. Lead me, guide me, open my eyes to see amazing things in your Torah, and He always does. Bo Hashem. So, 
how do we start a relationship with God? First, we ask for forgiveness, first and foremost. Second, we have to be uh, put up what I call the surrender flag. What does that mean? That means that I like, I want, I will. Let's get rid of the I, 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 you're ready. And surrender your will to God, Hashem. Not what I want. What do you want, Hashem? Where do you want me? What do you want me to do? And then I can begin to live my life unto Hashem. What does it say? I will love Hashem, my God, with all my heart, all my soul, and all of my possessions. So, Hashem, we have to surrender to. That's number two. Number three, we have to be, we have to hear that still, small, quiet voice within us. If we're in the middle of revolutions each and every day, if it's noise, if it's this, if you put the television on, whatever, whatever you do to take away the quietness, find some time a couple times a day to have a quiet time with the Almighty. And you can do prayers called hit bonadut. What I call them in English is freelance prayers. What does that mean? That means to pour out your heart to the Almighty. Whatever's on your mind, on your heart, to give it over to Him. And lately I've been discussing with uh, some close friends that uh, we have to know the difference of us choosing from our free will and asking God to help us. See, God doesn't serve us. We serve him. So we have to do our best. He does the rest. What does that mean? That means that we have to make the decisions and then ask Hashem to help us proceed with those decisions. Makes sense, right? Anyway, so what else does it take in relationship, your surrender will intensify your relationship with the Almighty as well. And what else do we have to do? We have to study Scripture. We have to study not the New Testament, oh, yo, yo, which is 75% man-made, but to study the Torah, what the church calls by conspiracy, the Old Testament, is really the true Bible. And in there... If you don't find it in there, it's not real. It doesn't exist. It's not truth. So let's start studying what is truth so we can connect to the true God. Most people that go to church don't even know who God is. They think he's some man. Whoa, is that off the wall? God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should relent. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. And... Also, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 25 through 27, God is not a human being. And in both of those passages, it says that God does not relent. You know what that means? It means that he does not change his mind. No? So, we, had, we do it his way or the highway. It's not your way. He gave you free will so that your free will, when you choose him, has value. He didn't make you do it. You did it of your own free will to embrace God and his Torah. And that's what Hashem, our God, wants. He wants us of our own free will to serve him, to love him, to study what his will is, and to be glad and willing to do it. Anyway, we are now coming up to Rosh Hashanah which is this Friday, and I want to wish everybody a healthy, happy, and prosperous new year, both spiritually and physically. May we all be written in the book of life, Leolam Ed forever, <laughs> with goodness, only goodness, yeah? I, all the other stuff should be behind this and not in front, and only goodness should be ahead. So start on your the work of your personal love relationship with the true God, the Almighty, 
the Holy One of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the only God, and there is no other, it says umpteen times in the Torah. He is the only God. So find the true only God, make a relationship with him, and find how much better quality of life you have. Well, I got to go now, but I'll be back. Sei gesund, abi gesund, sei gebend. In other words, may you all be blessed. No? Shalom, shalom. <laughs>